Hey, does anybody not have a communion cup? They all got I don't. Um, <laughs> Right. Hey guys, all have to do this. I'm not sure. There's a little collapsible guest that I can take with my book because it's not stuck in the desk. Alright, guys. We're here in the Bible. I'm going to take my picture. All right, guys, can I get a couple people to pray for us before we get started? Willie and Shauna, would you guys pray for us? Jay, did I see your hand? Yep. Would you pray for us, too? Anything in particular? Go with the Spirit, buddy. Dear Lord, we want to thank you, Father, for the night. I want to thank you all, Lord God, for your time, Lord God, and I feel like to see your face, Lord God, and see you working in our life, Lord God. We ask you, Father, that you remove any distractions, Lord God, that can, that can distract us, Lord God, from us hearing your word, Lord God. We ask, Father, that you give us ears to hear, eyes to see, Lord God, from a spiritual point of view, everything that you want conveyed to us. We ask that you work mightily through Beverly tonight, Lord God, as he does the devotional, Lord God. We ask that you give us the ability to give him our undivided attention, Lord God. We pray this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we ask you to this song. I just want to thank you for this time of fellowship, this time of worship, Lord. Um, that's what we're here for, to praise you. And all the glory goes to you, Lord. Um, I pray that our hearts are posture towards you tonight and that we, be, we hear what we need to hear, um, Lord. And uh, I pray that you speak through them tonight as he gives the message. And I pray this in your name. And Father, I thank you for all of us to be here together as a family. She is to worship you. We are to be here to hear your word, Lord. <coughs> Lord, I ask that you would give that all away and, and bring this devotion to us through him, Lord. And we may be leaning in and receive what you're trying to tell us, Lord. And you're up. I too ask that there's no distraction. That would uh, take our focus off of you, Lord. I love you and I ask all these things. Amen. So the first song is Lord I Need You, correct, right, Tom? Yep. All right, Tom, whenever you're ready. <laughs>
temptation comes my way. When I cannot stand, I'll fall on you. Jesus, you're my hope.
Uh, while we were singing, um, I was thinking about you being a treasure, and, <coughs> and that you are Jesus, you are my treasure, uh, you are our treasure, King, because of who you are and what you've done, but Jesus, because of who you are, it's all because of who you are, Jesus, um, that we have breath, that we stand here. <coughs> that punishment has passed over us because we belong to you and because of who you are. So thank you for allowing us tonight to sit here and worship and pray and praise and take communion and be saved, Jesus. We thank you, King. Amen. Um, so I was thinking about communion today. Lego asked me and uh, <coughs> I wanted to just, uh, yeah, I plan on reading out of Corinthians as Paul would lead us in communion. Uh, Paul had, uh, I believe, was in communion there, but I was thinking about uh, communion and, and, and what it is and, and why we do it. And, and I was thinking, um, I was reading in Joshua, and uh, I was looking at places in Joshua, in the beginning with Joshua, and Jericho fell. and. Um, through the Bible where we see um, we see Passover and we see Jesus um, all through the Old Testament and who he is and him saving us. Um, and I was thinking tonight maybe we could just look at Passover and look at the Last Supper when Jesus ate with his disciples and then uh, we'll just read uh, 1 Corinthians 11. But uh, So Passover obviously was when um, judgment uh, uh, to uh, Egypt, it passed over um, all the, the people of God, uh, all the Israelites, because of the blood of the Lamb on the doorpost. 
all through Hebrews it talks about Jesus being our perfect sacrifice, our eternal sacrifice, our Passover lamb forever. We are saved because of him. Um, and uh, that's not just for the Israelites. Obviously, that's for us today as we take it together. You see him extend his hand to a, a whore in Jericho when uh, judgment was being passed and um, that God was giving that city and that place to his people. You see uh, Rahab, the whore of Jericho, leave the scarlet robe out her window. Um, and you see that she was saved because she believed. And it was, uh, it was Passover. Um, and so in Matthew 6, um, Jesus is eating with his disciples. I want to read this. It says, On the first day of the festival of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, Where do you want us to prepare the Passover meal for you? As you go into the city, he told them, you will see a certain man tell them, the teacher says, my time has come, and I will eat Passover, eat the Passover meal with my disciples at your house. So the disciples did as Jesus told them and prepared the Passover meal there. Well, as evening, Jesus sat down at the table with the twelve. While they were eating, he said, I tell you the truth, one of you will betray me. Greatly distressed, one asked, uh, each one asked in turn, Am I the one, Lord? He replied, One of you who has just eaten from this bowl with me will betray me. For the Son of Man must die, as the Scriptures declared long ago. But how terrible it will be for the one who betrays him. It will be far better for that man, for if that man had never been born. Judas, the one who would betray him, betray him, also asked, Rabbi, am I the one? And Jesus told him, You have said it. As they were eating, Jesus took some bread and blessed it. Then he broke it in pieces and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this and eat it, for this is my body. And he took a cup of wine and gave thanks to God for it. He gave it to them and said, Each of you drink from it, for this is my blood, which confirms the covenant between God and his people. It is poured out as a sacrifice to forgive the sins of many. Mark my words, I will not eat, I will not uh, drink wine again until the day I drink it new with you. In my Father's kingdom. Paul says, I pass on to you what I received from the Lord himself. On the night when he's, he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took some bread and gave thanks to, thanks to God for it. Then he broke it into pieces and said, This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup of wine after supper, saying, This cup is a new covenant between God and his people, an agreement confirmed with my blood. Do this in remembrance of me as often as you drink it. For every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are announcing the Lord's death until he comes again. Um, Jesus talks to a bunch of people in John about this, about uh, eating his flesh and drinking his blood. And so many people are like, this is a hard uh, teaching. We don't understand this, right? Like, what do you mean? And those that were believers, uh, obviously, you know, what the disciples says, Lord, like, you are, you are, where else will we go? You have the words that lead to life. So we, as the church and believers, do this just not as a thing, but we are, uh, because we believe Jesus died and rose and sits on the throne, we are doing this as a family, knowing that he is coming again. And we remember him, and we give thanks to him today as a family because we are saved, and, he, and punishment has passed over us because we are his. So let's take this as a family, guys, and praise Jesus for this. This isn't just a thing. This is... Us as the church saved as believers. Amen. Amen. All right, Tom, I believe the last one's above all.
church is going to encounter you tonight, that they're going to see what you have shown me and what you want to speak to them, Lord. Jesus, I pray that you move in a mighty way tonight in all of our hearts. Lord, I'm so thankful for all the things that you're doing within the church. Lord, that you're opening doors and that lost and broken are coming in, Jesus. Lord, I'm grateful to see you working in the guys' lives and the men's house. For you to working in the women on the women's side. Jesus, I'm greatly encouraged by your word. I thank you for being faithful, Lord. It's in your precious and holy name I pray this, amen. Alright, guys. So we're we're starting Thessalonians being like a um, and I'm gonna be reading verses one through three in Thessalonians. One. First Thessalonians 1, 1, 1, yeah, thankful cry, what is it, thankful cry, I love you, Lego. Alright, and so um, it says this. It says this letter is from Paul and Silas and from Timothy. We are writing to the church in Thessalonica and to those who belong to God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. May God give you grace and peace. 
We always thank God for all of you and pray for you constantly. As we pray to God the Father about you, we think of the faithful work, your loving deeds, and the enduring hope you have because of our Lord Jesus Christ. Man, guys, as I was reading this, uh, Jesus had pointed this out to me that this looked all too familiar. As I was looking at this, it was like, man, we thank, always thank God for all of you. He says, we pray for you constantly. Man, he's like, as we pray to God the Father, and we think of your faithful work, your loving deeds, and your enduring hope because of Jesus Christ. And as I began to see this, it, it, Jesus had put it on my heart. He's like, you've seen this before. You've seen this before over and over and over again. And it touched my heart. Paul here says that he's always praying for others. Always, constantly, in the throne room, coming to Jesus for others. As I began to dig into Paul's prayers, and there are many, um, man, it was like he wasn't ever praying for himself. Paul wasn't ever praying for himself. He was always praying for other people. And through that, I believe there's a feeling. Um, man, I've been waking up in the morning, hitting my knees and pleading for the guys in the men's house. And praying for the guys in the men's house, I've been more impacted by Christ. More has been done with me inside through Christ than me hitting my knees and praying for me. And it was awesome to see Jesus work in this way. As Paul was praying, I also saw this. He was always thankful for what Jesus was doing in them and for them. That Jesus had given them to the church and what Jesus was doing in them. And so, he was, he was happy to see that they were loving each other. Man, they're loving deeds. Deeds not done grudgingly, but deeds done out of love. Out of love for one another. And I began to think. I was like, man, this is all way too familiar. So I went to Ephesians 1, verses 16 through 23. And I'm going to hit on a couple of these verses. But the whole section points to this. And it says in 16, I have not stopped thanking God for you. Man, he just said, I'm always thanking God for you. He's like, I'm not stopped thanking God for you. Familiar, right? I pray for you constantly. Man, it says it again here. Asking God, the glorious Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, to give you some spiritual wisdom insight so that you might grow in your knowledge of God. Man, he's praying for the building of the church. Paul is here and he's praying, man, that you have spiritual wisdom, which comes from Jesus, and spiritual insight, or also spiritual discernment, so they could see things and grow closer with one another and with Jesus. He says, for their knowledge of God. He goes on to say, I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light so you can understand the confident hope he has given to those he's called, his holy people who are his rich and glorious inheritance. And he's praying that they are flooded with light, that they become beacons of light for the lost and the broken. And he's constantly praying this, and he's constantly being thankful. I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe in Him. Man, he prays that we will understand God's incredible greatness and power, the same power that raised Christ from the dead on the cross. Man, that we would experience that power. Man, and, and he's like, I'm constantly doing this. In Philippians 1, Verses 3 through 11. Man, this is what Paul's saying here. Every time I think of you, I give thanks to my God. Again, he's giving thanks for the people in the church, for what he's doing in their lives. Man, whenever I pray, I make my requests for all of you with joy. Out of a joyful heart, he's making requests for everyone. 
For you have been my partners in spreading the good news about Christ from the time you first heard it until now. Man, so that we can spread the good news, guys. Pleading on each other's behalf so that the good news gets spread so the lost and broken encounter Jesus. So when the people come into these houses, they experience the love of Christ. They experience the attitude of Christ. They experience the grace, the mercy, and the peace that was poured out upon us. He says, I am certain that God who began the good work within you will continue his work until he's finally finished on the day of Christ Jesus' return. He's like, man, I'm also, so that the work that's being done in you continues to grow. For it is God who makes it grow. We're the ones who water it. And so, of course, he's running to God with it. Down further, he says, I pray that your love will overflow more and more, that you will keep growing in knowledge and understanding. That the love of Jesus would flow more and more out of us. That we would grow deeper in our knowledge and understanding. Constantly pleading for not himself, but for those around him. He says, for I want you to understand what really matters, which is Jesus. So you may live pure and blameless lives until the day of Christ's return. May you always be filled with the fruit of your salvation and the righteous character produced in your life by Jesus Christ. For this will bring much glory and praise to God. He's constantly praying that the people within the church are a reflection of Jesus. Man, guys, we see this in Acts 2.42. It says they were devoted to prayer, guys. Devoted. And you see this in Paul. He is devoted to praying. He's devoted to praying for what will build the church, what will help the church go deeper, people to know God, people to experience love for the work that's being done in you to be complete. Man, in 1 Timothy 2, right at the beginning, it says, it's in 1 through 4, it says, I urge you first of all to pray for all people. Again, it's like, pray for everyone. Ask God to help them and intercede on their behalf. So he's like, pray for their needs. Pray for their growth. Pray for their knowledge of God. And give thanks for them. Again, we see give thanks. Constantly thanking God for what he is doing for his faithfulness. Giving him praise. And it says, pray for kings and all who are in authority. So that we can live peaceful and quiet lives marked by godliness and dignity. Man, lives marked by godliness and dignity. Man, we were talking about today. Man, the apostles, their lives were marked by godliness. They were like, man, we don't, these guys aren't scholars. They don't know this stuff, but we know they spent time with Jesus. Amen. Man, marked by godliness. This is good and pleases God our Savior. Who wants everyone to be saved and to understand the truth. And he wants everyone to be saved. Amen. That is why we got to constantly plead for each other. Constantly be praying with thankful hearts for what Jesus is doing. And seeing the growth around us. Devoted to prayer, guys. Devoted to prayer. Prayer here really recovered is a core value. Man, really being devoted. And in that, if I'm praying for all of you, and all of you are praying for me, man, how lifted up am I? That's, that's like 25, 30 people praying for me to God. And if everybody's praying for each one of you, it's like 25, 30 people lifting you up to God. Man, think about the power in that. Man, so I have a couple questions, guys. Man, have we been praying for each other? Like, really, have we been going into the throne room and really praying for one another? Not just going into the throne room focused on us, but focused on the church and the body of Christ. Man, have we been praying grudgingly? Paul says, I prayed with joy. Have we been just going through the motion? Oh man, I gotta pray. Or is it man like I want to get in that throne room? I want to lift some people up to Jesus. 
Have we been thanking God for each other? Man, have we been thankful that Jesus has brought all of us together as a family? Man, I hear guys in the house right, right now going, man, I'm about to spend a Thanksgiving and Christmas and I'm actually about to have some family. Man, have we been praying for those in the church to be built up? Man, are we really praying that people are raised up, whether they go past us or not? Are we praying that they're raised up and used within the church? Man, fanning spiritual gifts in the flames, fighting off the enemy and building the kingdom? We are fighting for souls after all. Have we been thanking God for what he is doing with each other? Man, guys, and are we pleading for lost and broken? <coughs> Man, I, I've seen the life in Justin. I've seen the life in Louie. I've seen the life in Zay. I've seen the life in John. I've seen the life in Rob. I've seen the life in Jay, man. I've seen the life in Matt. Jesus is light shining out of them. And they were lost and they were broken. And I saw them in their state of brokenness, feeling helpless and alone. Now they're united and they have family. We all do. And isn't that what we want for those that are out there? That's what I leave you guys with. Amen. <laughs>